The Tech Nerdist channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. If you'd like to check us out on Patreon, pop over to www.patreon.com slash technivorous. That's T-E-C-H-N-I-V-O-R-O-U-S. Here, we do our best to stay up to date on the latest and greatest in 3D printing and tech and keep you informed on the latest developments in these sectors. So, if you're interested in getting updates on 3D printing or technology such as programming, robotics, artificial intelligence, and things of that nature, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, leave a like on this video, and comment about what you'd like to see in the future because we make these videos for you. Hey folks, and welcome to 3D Printing for Beginners 2020 edition. Today we are going to be talking about what exactly a slicer is. Now, you probably heard the term already if you've just gotten your 3D printer. It's one of the first things they throw at you is this word slicer. And you might want to know what it is, what it's for. Or maybe you're just looking into getting a 3D printer and you want to know how complicated it is. So this is a good place to start. The slicer is actually the software that takes your 3D model depending on the format that the model is in, it's usually an STL, and it will take that file and slice it down into individual parts of what they call G-code, which is the code that the machine can read, and it tells the motors how much to move and when in order to produce the geometry that we're looking for. So that sounds a little complicated, but you don't have to do all that math in your head. Basically, it's a drag and drop process where you can select a few settings and change a few things, and basically click a button and it does all the work behind the scenes for you. So today we are going to be taking a look at probably the most common slicer that is used for FDM printing and FDM of course standing for fused deposition modeling. It is sometimes also called FFF printing but it's basically the process of extruding hot molten plastic through the tip into a set geometry pattern to build an object layer by layer. So what we are going to do is open up Kira. I already have it open and it is right here so this is my Kira I have a different theme it is a little bit darker than usual don't mind that at all um, basically what we are going to be looking at today is how to use this software and it's actually pretty simple what you need to do is go ahead and find yourself a model and I have plenty of them I have them in a separate folder so I'm gonna go ahead and open that up right now and I will just drag and drop one of them in here. And there you have it. This is basically a deconstructed helmet. And I believe this is Iron Man. Um, Pre-arranged on the build plate to print in one go. So uh, this is a model I downloaded from a website. I did not make this myself. If you'd like to know more about where you can get free models for your collection. Uh, the video after this one in this playlist will be full of all sorts of information along just those lines. But for now we need to go ahead and look over here. You can see these different options. Now what these are are settings that it will put into the G-code when it does all those calculations I told you about. The only ones you really need to worry about are in the recommended settings. So here you can choose the layer height which means how thick do you want the lines of each layer to be. Uh, those lines can sometimes be visible and require post-processing work such as sanding or filling the cracks. Uh, but generally, uh, 0.12 is pretty fine. You won't see those lines as much. 0.2 is generally what I use as a standard. You see the lines a little bit. It does require a little post-processing, but it is a lot faster. The lower the layer height the longer it's going to take to print because the more layers it's going to need to reach the destination height so there are also other options here in the simple options such as infill uh, right now it's at 100 percent if i were to leave that it would print this as a 100 percent solid object meaning each layer will be solid and we can go ahead and slice this and i'll let it go for a second while i talk about these other two uh, support is generally advisable when you're printing a model that is going to have an overhang of over about 45 50 degrees that is illustrated here by these red lines uh, red surfaces are overhangs that might require support so in this case I would probably turn it on just because of this long line right here it should print okay but we don't want it to have to print on nothing 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and let this finish slicing though because I'm not concerned with that at the moment. I want to show you these separate layers. It is also possible to manipulate the model over here. If you click on the model, it is selected as you can see because it's highlighted. There we go. Let's jump in here real quick and we will come back to that. So this is the preview mode. It's processing the layers and it's going to give us a pretty cool colorful view of what we're looking at and a couple other things that are worth noting while looking at the slicer. Alright, so here we have our model after it's sliced. This is what is called a path. It will show us the path the nozzle is going to travel. It also tells us over here on the right that there are 719 layers at this layer height and we can scroll down through them to a specific layer as well. And then this bar at the bottom allows you to scroll backwards through the path on that layer. So if I pull it all the way back you should see it undrawing this basically. And you can actually see the nozzle in there as well. This is the start of this layer. If we hit play and let it play, it will actually go ahead and show you the path that it's going to trace for this whole layer. So uh, we don't need to see that right now. We're going to go back into prepare because I wanted to show you a couple other things. We can select the model. As I said, it becomes highlighted in the default version of Kira. It highlights in blue and this is the move tool so I can select one of the axes and move it if I move it out of the build plate I will get an error it will show me that it is unprintable I can also change the size let's say I want to make this 25 percent it will scale it down and I have uniform scaling on so it scales it evenly which means I don't have to adjust each of those individually I can turn it off and change the dimensions if I need it to be wider or something like that there is a rotate here and I can go ahead and grab the ring and rotate it. One of the other handy features in here is the rotate to build plate. So if I click this button here and then click any face on the object, it will rotate the whole object to sit on that face. I'm going to undo that because this is the best orientation to print this. Um, I can also mirror the object and then if I put more than one model in here I can change the settings for different models. Now all that's more complicated than you need to know it doesn't really matter. I'm going to turn support on and then we will re-slice this and when I look at it you will see this edge here has uh, some stuff built up underneath it. Now this should slice a lot faster because it's a lot sl smaller model and that is of course going to reduce the number of layers. Now it is 179 but you can also see this almost transparent blue build up here that is your support to ensure that the model doesn't print on thin air and keeps its geometry instead of drooping or anything like that. The last setting in here is adhesion and if you click that button uh, basically it prints a skirt or a brim around the outside which is uh, a couple of thin layers that will help it attach to the bed so you don't have any corners lifting and warping and things like that. So that's the basics of slicing. Once you slice the file you're gonna go ahead and save it to that micro SD card that came with your printer and then go ahead and insert it into your printer. If you'd like to change the name of the file you're saving with Cura, you go ahead and click down here where the pen is next to the name and you can edit the name and I suppose slice it again here because I added my adhesion and then it says save to file. So I can save it if you have that micro SD card in, it should automatically say save to micro SD card, and that's what you want to do. So that's basically it for what this slicer is, what it does, how to use it. Uh, we went over quite a bit, but basically when you get your settings turned on the way that you like them, it's going to be a drag, drop, click slice, click save, and then move it right to your printer. So it's actually a pretty streamlined process once you get it down. And yeah, there are a lot more settings in here to tweak depending on your particular printer. But for the most part, you can get a good profile online pre-built. And Kira has a ton of them already built in for a ton of different printers from different manufacturers. It's one of the reasons that they just seem to dominate in the slicer world. So 
Thanks for stopping by, guys. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. The next video in this playlist is going to show you where to get your own models for 3D printing to add to your collection and start printing cool things without having to make them yourself. Well, that's it, guys. That's going to wrap up this video. If you've noticed the shirt, the merch is available. Go ahead and check out the Teespring merch link down below. It won't be available on a channel store until I reach 10,000 subscribers, and so far I am just about to hit 5,000. So uh, it'll be a little while, a couple more months before you see this on the actual channel, but they are available now. I have a couple other designs. Feel free to pop over there and check them out and know that any purchase through the Teespring site definitely helps to promote our site here and increase the channel's ability to make videos in the future. So we appreciate all your support. Don't forget to check out the Teespring link. Check out our Patreon link. Leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more coming at you in the coming days.